Today is uh, Saturday, the 16th of October, 2021, and this is the third session for Mindfulness for Beginners in English. I would like to warmly welcome, with permission, Venerable Bhante Homagama Dhammakusalathero to today's program. And I would also like to warmly welcome all the participants joining via Zoom and Mixelar. Now, I would like to invite Venerable Bhante to kindly commence with the Dhamma talk for today's session as uh, a support for all our mindfulness practices. Thank you, Bhante. So dear Dhamma friends, again, we are connected here for our new program, Mindfulness for Beginners. So today, I want to tell you a secret that we always see in nature, but most of the time, we tend to ignore it. We close our eyes and most of the time we don't see. But this secret is everywhere and always we can hear the whisper. We can hear the appearance it is making in our environment, in our surrounding. So this is the secret about golden leaves. Now let me start with a small story. This story is related to a king who loved gardening. So he wanted to create this most beautiful garden. So he went to a teacher who was so popular for gardening. And for years, he was learning this art of gardening. After his returning to his country, he prepared this huge garden with a lot of workers, with a lot of help. And for years, he was working on this garden. So after making it perfect, he wanted to invite his teacher to see this garden. And the teacher came. He welcomed the teacher at the gates and he was showing him around. He was taking him on a tour throughout the garden. When teacher goes into the garden, his face suddenly changed. There was no approval on his face. There was no happiness on his face. He wasn't happy about recording his in progress. So little by little, the tour progressed, and the king also noticed that the teacher is not happy. He is thinking about some things. So towards the end of the tour, he stopped. And he asked from the teacher, what is the wrong? I don't see any approval in your face. I don't see any appreciation in your face. Maybe I have done something wrong. I have spent so many hours preparing this garden. So tell me, what is the problem? What is the issue with this garden? So the teacher replied, there are no golden leaves in your garden. That is the fault. That is the mistake. You can't have a perfect garden without golden leaves. Without golden leaves, this garden is imperfect. It is not matching with the reality or the truth of the world. So the king was curious. He wanted to know what, is, what are these golden leaves. Then teacher explained, golden leaves are the yellow leaves or fall leaves that are from the trees. Because the king was so excited about the preparation of the garden, he removed even the yellow leaves from the ground as well as even from the trees. So there were no yellow leaves. There were no golden leaves. So the teacher was saying, without golden leaves, this garden is incomplete. It is not matching with the reality of the world or reality of the life. Then he went somewhere, he gathered some of the golden leaves that was thrown away and he brought it back and he spread it around the trees. And he was saying, now the garden is complete. Now the golden leaves are there. So now I can appreciate your work. I can appreciate your effort. So this is the secret about golden leaves. You see this everywhere, but our eyes and mind tend to ignore this fact about the world, this valuable lesson about the life 
our mind tend to ignore. So we will a little bit discuss about this, these golden leaves, this secret that nature is whispering to our ears. So when it comes to golden leaves, what is it? Now let's say somebody is born. With that birth, there comes the death of that person. Uh, leave, uh, leaves are born. They come with fresh green color. And after a while, they become darker and darker. And then towards the end of their life, they will become golden. So same goes for animals, same goes for the trees, same goes for humans. With birth, we are destined to die. So that is the reality. So this is not something religious. We are not talking religion here. This is the truth of life, the reality of life. So most people, they think that these things are too negative. They think that these things should be discussed. But if you just open your eyes, you will see this reality. It is everywhere. You can see the breath appearing. And after a while, it is disappearing. You can see the sounds appearing. After a while, they are disappearing. You can see the thoughts appearing. And after a while, they are disappearing. So everything is under this law, under this secret. Oh, everything is under the gold, secret of golden leaves, the truth of golden leaves. So when we think about it, when we open our eyes a little bit, then we see it everywhere. You can see how the sun is rising in the morning. And towards the end of the day, it goes down. You can see the wind is appearing. After a while, it is gone. You can see certain things out in the world. Maybe news, maybe incidents, they appear. After a while, they are gone. So all these things, they become golden after a while. They teach us the lesson of golden leaves. So if you don't accept this reality, that will create a major source of anxiety, stress, and depression in your life. If you think about it, if you think about your mind, if you think about day-to-day -day difficulties that you are facing, all of them are related to some kind of a death. Maybe it is a death of a person. Maybe it is a death of an idea. Maybe it is the death, death, death of a thing that you had. So whatever the difficulty that we face in our mind, whatever the difficulty that we face in our day-to-day -day life is somewhat related to these golden leaves. It is somewhat related to not, not accepting this truth about life this reality about life. So if you just open your eyes a little bit, it is everywhere. And you can see how, we are, how your mind is struggling to accept this basic truth about the world. How your mind is struggling to create everything green color. How your mind is behaving like that king to hide these golden leaves. So you just have to open your eyes a little bit. And if you just open your eyes, you will see that all the difficulties in your mind, all the difficulties in your life are related to some kind of a death, some kind of an incident that is related to golden leaves. So when we learn about it, when we think about it, we become more accepting. We understand this is a reality. This is a truth of our lives. So if you accept little by little, if you develop that acceptance, then you are creating happiness because you are accepting the very basic nature of the world or the life and you are moving forward with that acceptance. So when you see death in your day-to-day -day life, when I say death, I am not referring to maybe a death of a person, but death of a goal, death of an idea. When we see in our day-to-day -day life, every day we are facing these lessons. 
every day it is knocking on our door. But if we ignore, then of course we can stay in the darkness and spend even a whole lifetime. But if you just open your eyes, you will see this everywhere. Even in nature, you can see. Even in day-to-day incidents, you can see everywhere. You can see this reality. So when it comes to mindfulness, in a way we are observing this reality. We are observing the truth of golden leaves. Without judgment, we just become aware and we see what is happening. When you just open your eyes, when you just become aware, you will see that breath is appearing and it is disappearing. The heartbeat is appearing and it is disappearing. The steps, the sensations of the feet appearing, disappearing. The sounds, thoughts, all the things, they appear and they disappear. So if you are a mindful person, if you are a person who is practicing mindfulness, you just have to be aware that this incident is happening. Things appear and they disappear. They and things appear and they disappear. Without judgment, we just try to be the observer. We just stay with this process and see how our mind is again and again trying to reject this nature. If it is catching a thought, if it is going after a thought, then we are rejecting this very basic nature because thoughts also appear after a while, they disappear. If you feel pain while sitting or walking, then your mind will create a struggle out of that. But if you just stay for a while, then pain is also disappearing after a while. Maybe you will feel some agitation in your mind, difficulty in your mind. That too, your mind will start storytelling and it will create some kind of a story out of it. But if you just stay for a while, just observe for a while, that is also disappearing. So everywhere you can see if you are mindful. When we walk, when we sit, we see this nature, we accept this reality and we just observe it without judgment. When we do our day-to-day lives also, we can see that these things are appearing and then they are disappearing. Even your, during your work hours, you can see certain thoughts, certain incidents are appearing. And if you just become the observer, if you just stay without judging, then it will disappear after a while. So when we are mindful, in a way, we try to learn this lesson of golden leaves. In a way, we try to accept this reality, this truth of life. And if you accept more and more, then you will start to realize that your mind is becoming more and more happy because you accept this very basic nature of life, this very basic nature of reality. When certain incidents happen in your life, you realize that your mind is not creating so much mess as it used to be. It is accepting these lessons. It is accepting the lesson of the golden leaves. The ideas may die, the goals may die, the people or the things may die, but still you try to appreciate that nature. You try to move on. You try to just let go of these thoughts emotions and incidents that if you do little by little you realize that your mind is becoming more and more happier although it may appear like negativity to some people this is truly a way to be happy it's a happiness hack that you can use in your day-to-day life how should we use this type of a lesson as a happiness hack So I was asking a person, I asked him, what would you do differently if you know that you are going to die soon? So this person was not from a Buddhist background or not not from a Sri Lankan background. He was completely from different part of the world. 
I was just asking him this simple question. What would you do differently if you know that you are not living for so long? If you know that you are going, going to die soon? Then he was, you know, thinking for a while. Then he was telling, I would laugh louder. I would enjoy the day. I would enjoy the moments with my children. I would enjoy the moments with my family. I would I would enjoy the nature around me. I would go outside more and more and see the nature that surrounds me. And I would be more forgiving because I am not living for a long time. And I would say goodbyes with bottom of my heart because this could be my last goodbye to somebody and I would enjoy whatever the meals that I am having I would more and more become aware become appreciated about the present moment so that was his answer so you understand no religious background no uh, same country no, not from this region, but he was just telling that these are the changes I would do if I accept, if I understand that I won't live for a long time, then this is how I, how I would spend my days, my remaining time. So if you just include this lesson of golden leaves into your life, you would last more. You would be more forgiving. And when you say goodbyes, you would say them in the bit bottom of your heart. And you would appreciate your day-to-day life more and more. You would appreciate your meals. You would appreciate the time with your family. So you are appreciating the present moment more and more. You are welcoming whatever the things that you already have. You are being grateful about the things that you already have. And it would be easier for you to forgive people. It would be easier for you to be thankful about the things that you have. So this is the lesson. This is the teaching of the golden leaves. So with mindfulness, we are also accepting this nature. We are observing this very nature. When you become mindful, in your mind you see these things are appearing. Although my mind thinks that they are staying forever, after a while they disappear. Maybe pleasant sensations might come. After a while they disappear. Maybe unpleasant sensations will come. After a while they disappear. So if you try to be mindful, that is learning the lesson of golden views. And if you learn that lesson, more and more you will become a happier person. More and more you would appreciate the present moment. So truly, it is a way to live a happy life. It is a happiness fact that we are learning from the golden leaves. So when you see the people who are practicing mindfulness, when you see how they develop their practice, you see, you notice, and even they would say that they are becoming more and more happier people. So what's the reason? Because when you practice mindfulness, they accept this lesson of golden leaves. Maybe the acceptance they are is not intentional. With mindfulness, what we are doing is that we just become aware of this reality, become aware of this, about this greater truth of life. When you become aware, it's like your mind is finding a peaceful environment. It's like your mind is going to a safer environment. So when you practice mindfulness, automatically your mind is accepting this very nature of life. Your mind is more and more becoming aware about this very nature of life. 
and more and more it becomes aware similar to how water is seeking the lower grounds similar to how water is flowing with the gravity your mind will also go to a more peaceful state your mind will also be more accepting about this truth of life about this lesson of the golden views and when you accept that very nature of the life when you accept that very truth then you are becoming more and more peaceful then you are becoming more and more happy so you can of course experience this you don't have to believe my words in fact you can put this into practice practice of few weeks try to practice mindful walking mindful sitting and even day to day life doing certain certain activities you can just become mindful and if you practice that way after few weeks it won't take so long even after few weeks there was a young child who was talking and he was telling that i had lot of problems in my life i had problems with parents i had problems in my school so many things were there so i was seeking solutions for these problems when i once i started practicing mindfulness i didn't get answers for these questions but i was told to practice and i was told that if you practice you can find answers on your own so he was telling initially i would, i didn't believe but after a while i just started practicing after 3 weeks now i can feel that although the problems are still there they haven't changed but my mind is not struggling so much about them my mind is not creating so much difficulty pains take in nature is not there anymore and he was given his experience and he was sharing his experience he was telling that although the problems are there my mind is not creating so much confusion struggle out of me that pains taking nature of my mind is reduced so this you can also experience if you practice little by little every day at least like 20 40 minutes for formal practice mindful walking sitting and if you can continue for few weeks and if you try and become mindful in your day to day life after few weeks of practice you see that my mind is accepting this lesson of golden leaves and once it is accepting this lesson it is becoming more and more peaceful it is becoming more and more calm it is becoming more and more happy so that is the peace that we are seeking after that is the happiness that we are seeking after so i hope you can also experience this in your life you can also practice and see what we are talking about and you can also learn the lesson of golden leaves now we can take some time to experience this lesson of golden leaves that we were talking about today we will try and sit for a while so you have to make sure that you are sitting in a comfortable manner i just to see it is okay to take few seconds to do that once you have comfort in your seat you may close your eyes and become aware that you are sitting become aware about the present moment become aware what you feel when you pay attention to the present moment you have comfort in your seat your eyes are closed and you are aware about the present moment now when you do this you will see the lesson of golden leaves is appearing 
you may notice various sounds appearing and disappearing. You may notice various thoughts in your mind. They are also appearing and after a while they too disappear. You may notice bodily sensations. Maybe the pressure on your back, maybe your breath, maybe heartbeat kind of a vibration, maybe the stomach. So they too appear and disappear. Various sounds from the surroundings appear and they disappear. Various sensations from your body may appear. Maybe pain, maybe some other sensations. But after a while, they disappear. Emotions, thought may come. They too disappear after a while. Sometimes you may feel sleepy, but that too will disappear after a while. You will take a few more minutes and be attentive about this nature, about this lesson of golden leaves. Now you can open your eyes again. I hope during the last few minutes, you were able to experience how things are appearing and disappearing. So we just try to become aware without judgment. We just be mindful about this process. And that is the very nature of our practice and when you practice more and more you realize how your mind is trying to create a story out of these things how your mind is struggling how your mind is creating difficulty but that is fine little by little we let go of them 
little by little, we become more and more aware. So I hope last few minutes were useful in that sense. We can move forward with the next part of our program. Thank you very much, Bhante, for that uh, very uh, useful uh, talk and also the guided uh, mindfulness practice in, uh, in se during session, uh, live during session. Uh, as a next step uh, in the program, I would like to share with uh, any new participants um, the beginner's guide to mindfulness. I will try to share my screen. Uh, so the for any new beginner uh, joining today for the first time uh, we have two videos uh, on youtube uh, which is uh, mindful walking and mindful uh, sitting uh, with uh, mindful walking you can watch the vi uh, youtube video and uh, gain gather the instructions about um, what to focus on and all that and with mindful sitting it's the same thing uh, as bante also explained uh, without judgment you can start uh, uh, observing uh, how your attention shifts and then uh, the critical thing is how to plan your day and uh, try to allocate 20 minutes uh, to 40 minutes for mindful walking or even 15 minutes to let's say 40 minutes for mindful walking session and also another 15 to 40 minutes for uh, mindful sitting of course you can go up to one hour for each session uh, the more time you can allocate the better uh, once you are through with uh, with all that uh, and you do this for a few days uh, you can write your experience uh, in the form of a reflection report uh, it's a simple report although the word might be reflection uh, it's a simple report where you mention uh, what you have uh, uh, observed uh, uh, what was your object of attention what the difficulties uh, uh, what difficulties were encountered whether you manage to keep your attention on the object uh, uh, during the uh, mindful walking or mindful sitting and uh, what happened next and how you reacted you can describe in your own style in your own words so that Bhante gets an idea of, of how your practice or how your session went went on uh, so once the report is written uh, you can submit that uh, report to us uh, through the google form uh, the form is shown here. I will share this in the Zoom chat. Uh, and the email is the uh, uh, second option. You can email us a report. So if you do this uh, in the next few days and send us the reports, then we will present it uh, to uh, Bhante and, and the, during the session. And uh, you will gain the chance of uh, having uh, Bhante's advice on this. Uh, so this program will be held every Saturday, every week uh, to refresh your practice and to improve your practice. And the details, I believe, are already available with you, but uh, they are also contained in this guide, which I will share in the Zoom chat. Um, so with that completed, uh, the next uh, uh, item on our agenda is for us to uh, read through the uh, read through the reflection reports received and i would like to invite uh, lushani uh, to start reading out the reflection reports and questions for today thank you very much bante thank you namante avasrai bante there are two reflection reports and two questions for today i'll start with the reflection reports the first one is on mindful walking I started walking with attention on feet touching the floor. I observed many thoughts flowing into my mind. I saw that my attention shifted from thoughts to the feet and from feet to the thoughts. When I felt the left foot touching the floor, I knew for sure that my awareness was back in my body. After a few minutes, I could feel the emptiness between one leg placing on the ground and the other leg moving through the air to be placed on the ground. I found amazing comfort in focusing on this space in time between each step. Even with this sensation of emptiness, I could still feel my left foot and right foot touch the floor. 
appreciate your advice, Bhante. Okay, so this report, you can see the discussion here. You, this person is noticing how the thoughts are appearing again and again and how they are disappearing. How the steps are appearing again and again, how they are disappearing. And if you want to make sure that you are in the present moment, of course, the body is your safe heaven. The body is your safe house. Once you know that you have awareness in your body, you can verify that you are in the present moment. Okay, so the, those information are valuable even for a beginner. They have to understand if they want to make sure that they are in the present moment. You have to always pay attention to the body and notice that if you feel the feet or if you feel the breath, then you don't need any other proof that you are in the present moment. But if you just think in your mind, if you just let the mind decide, then that might play tricks on you. So that is why we are encouraging to verify that you are in the present moment using your body. And when you feel your steps, that is guaranteed. You are sure that you are in the present moment. So with that awareness, we again and again pay attention and we see how these things are appearing and disappearing. How the thoughts are coming, how the steps are appearing, how they are disappearing after a while. When you observe that nature more and more, when you observe that lesson more and more, then your mind naturally goes to the emptiness. Because in, the, in that emptiness, there is no birth or death. In that emptiness, there is no pain or difficulty. In that emptiness, there is no death. So your mind is naturally moving towards that direction but you can't force it you have to let it go naturally if you try to force it then again you are creating some difficulty some pain out of the practice you practice to get rid of the anxiety you practice to get rid of the difficulties but due to your practice you again create some kind of difficulty you become anxious due to the practice. So let it move naturally. And if you let it move naturally, then your mind is automatically going towards the emptiness. And that emptiness won't be disturbed with the things that are appearing or disappearing. Instead, the things appear from the emptiness and they too disappear into the emptiness. So we use various terms. Sometimes it's a sound of silence. That is also referring to the same type of emptiness that we are talking about. So all the sounds, they appear from this emptiness or from the sound of silence and they disappear into the emptiness. Disappear into the sound of silence. Even when you hear something behind that sound, the emptiness is there. The sound of silence is there. So don't try to force yourself into emptiness. It will come naturally. And you will see, although the things appear, they are not disturbing your emptiness. Although the things disappear, they are not disturbing your emptiness. So some people, when they become aware, when they become attracted to emptiness, they find if they see things appearing, they find it is disturbing. That's not the true way. When you just let it be, when you just let the mind be and release your grip, release your control, then it is automatically going to the emptiness. Things may appear, but they too disappear. You have to let it again and again happen. Let the cycle go again and again. Let the thoughts come. Let the sounds come. Let the sensations from your body come. And they disappear again and again. When you realize, when you see that nature more and more, then you become peaceful more and more. You become happy more and more. And you can see those words in this report. So what I suggest is that good way of practicing. And you have a lot of valuable information in your report. You may continue this way. 
and let the thoughts and other things may appear and let them disappear. Then when you let that process happen, more and more, your mind will start to appreciate this emptiness. Your mind will start to appreciate this bliss. So that is my advice for you. Thank you, Bhante. The next report, I practice mindful sitting and walking at the morning and at bedtime. I usually practice it in a very quiet and calm environment. I also watch various videos on YouTube and social media. Conclusion of the report. Okay, so this person, I would recommend if you can include some details about your practice, how you do mindful walking and sitting, and what are the sensations that you feel, and what you do during that time period. So if you report in that way, then we can take this discussion further and we can point out certain things from your practice. So listen to the earlier report. And there you saw a lot of details about how the mindful walking is done. So you can do the same thing. You can observe your practice and you can put them into words. If you do that, we can discuss further. Thank you, Bhante. Next are two questions. The first question is, Bhante, I notice many thoughts coming into my mind as I sit down for my mindful sitting practice, as well as during the day whilst doing other activity. Should I notice it as the wholesome thought or unwholesome thought, or just notice it as a thought only and see what happens? Okay, so the flow of thoughts, it is natural. There are certain ways you can just uh, notice it, you know, label it like wholesome thought, unwholesome thoughts. That's another way. But when you progress more and more into the practice, you have to tell us when you experience thoughts, how do you know that you are in the present moment? How do you know that you can bring your attention back to the present moment? So that is a good starting point. Of course, you can start dividing wholesome and wholesome, but first you have to make sure that let the thoughts be and just become aware that you can come back to the present moment. You know that you have a safe heaven in your body. Tell us uh, how, how you know that. The earlier, the very first report, that person was saying that he, he could feel the feet touching the ground. When that, that sensation is there, you know that you are in the present moment. So let the thoughts flow. You can't prevent the thoughts. But again and again, try and come back to the present moment. Try and notice what you feel. So whatever the activity you do, you can feel certain certain things. If you are having a meal, of course, all, all the thoughts are there. You can feel how you are tasting it, how you are grinding it how your hands are working to put your meal into the mouth. So these things you can notice and you just, if you tell that I could feel the pressure in my hands, I could feel how they were working, then we know that you were focusing on the present moment. You are focusing on your body. So what I suggest is that you don't have to struggle with thoughts so much. Let them be. And just make sure again and again you bring your attention back to the person moment. So some people, they use breath for this purpose. If you are doing some other activity, I suggest that you can focus on that activity. Maybe brushing, maybe having a meal, maybe driving, something like that. So you can feel certain things through your body and how the body is placed and how the pressure is applied. Those things are there. So again and again, you can leave the thoughts. You can just let the thoughts be. And again and again, you can become aware about your body. So for this person, if you can tell us next week, among these thoughts, how you brought your attention back to the body and how you felt it, then that is a very good starting point. 
you have to identify your safe haven first. Then only you can progress in your practice. So make sure that you are in the present moment. Make sure that you have some good sensations in your body that you can focus. And if you report back only one incident, one occasion that you are mindful, then we can discuss further. Thank you, Bhante. The next question is, what is mindfulness? Okay, so the, this question, you have to answer me, right? Just be aware and tell us your experience. Then you have your own answer. Because if I say this is mindfulness, then of course that might not be correct for you. We try and explain that we pay attention without judgment. All these things are ways to explain. The very first week I was trying to tell you that this is like something we experience. This is not book learning. Instead, we experience it and learn. Similar to the taste of salt. You can write so many paragraphs about salt. But once you experience, you realize that paragraphs were not accurate. And the, 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 the words, you don't need words anymore to understand what salt is like. So you just close your eyes, pay attention, and tell us what you feel. Or just walk in a comfortable manner, pay attention, and tell us what you feel. Once you give that information, then we have a common ground to discuss. Uh, this is your experience, and this is how you can progress your practice. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, that concludes the reflection reports and the questions for today. Uh, I think if there are any other questions anyone would like to ask now, there is some time so they can uh, raise the hand and now Manta will allow them to speak. Uh, and, and thank you, Bante, for answering the, the questions and, and taking the reflection reports much better. Thank you very much, Lushani. Um, uh, yes, Bante, so uh, I think this time enough for us to uh, allow for uh, verbal questions. So I would like to invite uh, any person interested uh, to raise verbal question to uh, uh, raise their Zoom hand. Because this is a beginner's program, it could be any question related to your mindful sitting, mindful walking, or mindful uh, uh, behavior during uh, uh, daily activities. Uh, uh, you can feel free and uh, raise your question in, uh, in any way you want. Uh, and Bhante will be most glad to help you. Okay, I can see uh, uh, Samantha Jayatilika raising hand. I will unmute. Thank, thank you, um, Namantha, for um, allowing me to answer the question. And thank you, Bhante, as well, um, for, for the wonderful course. Um, the question that I would like to ask is, um, now, when I'm uh, mindful, um, of my thoughts um, and I'm aware of uh, if I become aware of the, the thought and then the emotion the thought is um, leading to uh, emotion and the feeling I, um, I presume the feeling and an emotion they're the, I'm not sure whether they're the same or whether there's a distinguish between the two but um, anyway, um, so, so say a particular thought will give a, a, a sad feeling and perhaps due to the certain circumstances or whatever, the thought has um, led you. Uh, and I'm aware that the thought is something that happened in the past. Um, so that's come now to my awareness. Uh, that's giving me this certain emotion, negative emotion or a, a feeling. So how, I was just wondering how I would come away from that situation. I mean, I know then I sort of bring my attention to the breath, say, 
then that gives me a sense of relief and happiness. But however, I feel then I have dismissed my emotion, uh, not even though I fully accepted, say, that emotion is a sad emotion, I fully accepted that this is this emotion I have at this present moment. However, I'm leaving that emotion. I'm going to focus on my breath now. Then am I being dismissive of my emotions and feelings and just uh, letting go and not fully accepting? And obviously, if I fully accept the emotions, then I'm proliferating further, further un- helpful thoughts. What could Bhante advise how to deal with those sort of emotions and thoughts leading to? Thank you, Bhante. Okay, so various ways are there. Now, but the way you explained is the one way that now when you feel these sensations, when you feel these emotions, thoughts appearing, you become aware and you bring your attention back to the breath. But, but you mentioned that you, you have to become aware first. That very awareness, we have to be. Otherwise, we can't bring our attention back to the breath. So once you become aware, the task is already done. That you become aware that you feel probably the anger. And as a method, as a way to get relief, you can bring your attention back to the breath. Maybe you can hear the surrounding sounds. So that's one way. But you have to know that after only becoming aware, you can bring your attention back to the breath or some other object. So that awareness, that very awareness, you have to get first. You have to become aware. So when you do that, you realize that if I stay with that emotion, when I say stay, I'm not saying encouraging. I'm not saying feeding it, but instead just be the observer of that emotion. Then after a while, it will go. After a while, it will disappear. The thoughts are also the same. So various ways are there. You can be with that emotion and see how it is disappearing. And you can become aware that you feel these things and you can bring your attention back to some other object like your body or sometimes you can investigate what is the reason for this emotion why i am hurt in this manner what was the incident that were related so those are various ways when you practice more and more you realize oh, this works for me this doesn't work so what i suggest is that try and uh, practice, try and see what are the ways that you can handle these type of things. What you explained is one way. And of course, you can be with the emotion. You can be with the anger or some other emotion that that you feel and see how it is progressing. But you have to make sure that you are not feeding it. Some people, when they become angry, they, they, they get lost in that emotion. After only a few hours, they become aware that I got lost. I reacted this way. So that's also not good. In that case, it is better to break that process. Bring your attention back to something like breath or some other sensation. So various ways you can try. But you have to make sure first you know how to do it. First, you know how to observe breath very well. First, you know how to become aware about your emotions and bring your attention back to the breath. How to become aware of your thoughts and bring your attention back to the breath or the body the, or the feet, the sensations. And when you do that, you know that oh, once I become aware, my job is done. With that awareness, you can either bring your attention back to the body so you can just let the emotions be and see how it is disappearing after a while or how it is evolving after a while. So various ways are there. Try and put them into use. And if you come back with the feedback, then we can, of course, discuss further. Thank you, Bante.
Yeah. Um, just just quickly, um, I just want to clarify. You say if the emotion is quite an intense emotion, and um, even though one you're aware of the intensity of that emotion in, in that moment, if it's difficult to go back to the breath, w- would it would one then to deal with the emotion? Would one then reason out why is one feeling that way, etc., and stay with the emotion and with reasoning would that be a an idea if it's a you know, way to deal yes, with that's it also yes. another way but now if if mm-hmm. the emotions are too strong then mm-hmm. it is good to yeah. you know break attention into something else if you can't uh, observe your breath even go outside and walk for a while maybe do some kind of exercise or mm-hmm. listen to the sounds from the surrounding like that, it is better to break it. It's like small snowballing effect that that's happening in your mind. When it is becoming stronger and stronger, you shouldn't go along with it. Instead, you should break it and bring your attention back to something else. But if you can manage, then of course, it, it's a good way to you know be with that emotion, you know, and let it evolve. Observe how it is evolving. And how you can create, you know, peace little by little, create comfort in your mind. So these things are not short term. You have to put a lot of time and practice again and again. When you practice, you realize that earlier I was reacting like this. Earlier, I had so much difficulty when anger comes. But now, I'm not so much reacting. Now I am responding this way. Now I can be with that anger. And now it is disappearing much faster. Maybe earlier it took like three, four days for you to recover. Now you are recovering within a few hours. So that's progress, you can see. So that process you have to identify, observe. And not only in those occasions, that's what I'm telling. Because if you only practice during those occasions, it's not, not, not a good environment to practice. You have to make sure that you have your mindfulness strong. That is why we recommend formal practice, formal sitting, walking. And little by little, you deal with this day-to-day struggle. You fail again and again, but you learn lessons from it. And again, start your practice. When you do it for a few months, then you realize, earlier I was reacting like this. Now I can manage this way. So that is progress with time. That's why we are telling that this is not a uh, short solution. It's not a fast food kind of a solution, but you have to put some effort. You have to, you know, continue with it. And when you continue with it, you find that I now feel more and more peaceful and easy to manage these situations. Thank you, Bante. That was very helpful. I'll put that into practice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Bhante, uh, for that kind explanation. And thank you, Samantha, for uh, raising the question. Uh, all of your questions will benefit others uh, participating as well. So thank you. Uh, next, uh, there is Ayomi uh, raising her Zoom hand. I will like to ask uh, Ayomi to present the question to Bhante. Thank you. Bhante, if you feel like you can't sleep, can you do mindfulness to calm you down? Can you repeat the question, please? If like you can't sleep, can you do mindfulness to calm yourself? Namanta, I can't hear the first part clearly. Is it me or some difficulty? Bante, the... Bante yes. I think from what I heard, um, Iomi is asking uh, if someone can't sleep, can they use mindfulness? Uh, to to sleep. Okay. Ayomi, is that correct? Have I have I have I heard it correctly? Yeah. Okay, right. So this is a good question because in this new age, a lot of people having trouble sleeping. They work on their goals. They work on their plans throughout the day. They study, they work so hard. But once they try to sleep, you can't 
have a good night's sleep so last week i think last monday was world mental health day so at least now they realize that you have to at least new one day per year for your mental health so most people they practice during that day then they say bye bye see you next year they too feel these difficulties you can't sleep you work 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 you study 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 but when you go to sleep you can't get a proper sleep and when you continue with that cycle it is really irritating so with mindfulness of course we have a solution and there are few precautions that you can take so it was latest research i think they they tell that early in the morning when you wake up from your sleep your immunity is very high then throughout the day it is reducing and it is lowest when you come to the evening time so what is happening your mind is also becoming more and more irritated and more and more lost in the thoughts and feelings your body immunity is also reduced so though, though they are interconnected so you can't just say mental health or you can't just say physical health they are interconnected a healthy mind will only create a healthy body so if you pay attention to the present moment it is so relaxing mindfulness it is so relaxing that is why you can even save your sleeping time if you do formal practice let's say my calculation is that one hour of formal practice at least will save one and a half hours of sleep because it is so relaxing it is healing so when you work for a whole day and try to sleep at night you can't do but if you do mindful walking just before your sleep take a break from all the devices at least for 45 minutes or so and do a walking session you had to let go of all the garbage that you have gathered throughout the day so just walk 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 in a calm and quiet manner and let the thoughts and all the incidents flow and just again and again become aware about the present moment become aware that your body is walking and when you do that after maybe about 45 or so minutes you feel that your mind is relaxed and you won't need so much many hours of sleep even so if you go to your bed in that kind of a mindset if you go to the bed with a mindful mind then of course that will help you to relax more easily so you have to make sure that you are taking a break from the devices maybe about 45 minutes before and you are doing some kind of a mindful walking and sitting practice before bed and in that way if you approach your sleep i would recommend that you will go into sleep much more easy so a few advantages are shown that if you sleep with a mindful mind like this you will sleep comfortably and you will wake up fresh and you won't see nightmares in your sleep time so these advantages are shown for a mindful practitioner but i would like to finish with adding one more point now our discussion we thought that throughout the day you practice you do your work studies works and things then only before sleep you practice so you have to let go of a huge mess of garbage but in between if you practice do throughout the day maybe every every few hours if you take a mindful break maybe have your evening tea 
mindfully. Maybe go for a walk. Maybe take your meals mindfully. Maybe do some kind of a exercise that you can be mindful. If you do that, then that stress or that difficulty is not building. You are breaking it again and again throughout the day. And once you do that, you will realize that you don't need so much practice to go into sleep. You don't need so much effort to go into sleep. Because throughout the day, you were again and again becoming aware, again and again, you were letting go of those thoughts and emotions and difficulties that you were having. It won't build up. So those are different ways that you can try out. If you can do, take a small break and do some kind of a mindful activity every few hours, then it is not building. You are letting go again and again. And that will help you towards the end of the day. And your body immunity will also increase when you practice. Again and again, your immunity is reducing, but you are increasing it again. Again, reducing, increasing it again. So you have a healing power in your mind, becoming aware about your present moment is the best healing power you can get. So you are healing your body, healing your mind, and eventually it will help through your sleep as well. So this is my idea. So you, you have to come back with a report. You can't just ask a question and forget about it. Instead, try practicing this. Tell us whether it helped or maybe even the sleep you were having, you couldn't get it because of mindfulness. You can come back with a feedback. So that is what I recommend. It was very helpful. Thank you, Ayomi. Uh, uh, Bante, there is another question sent by a participant on the chat. Uh, have you, is it okay if I read that question as well? Is there time? Okay, we'll take a few more minutes for that. Thank you, Bante. The question is, is mindfulness a way of meditation? Okay, so when it comes to meditation, the word meditation, it is a cursed word. So you have various kinds of meditations. So I wouldn't recommend using the word meditation because some people go crazy doing meditation. So mindfulness is more and more simple. We say their attention, become aware of what your reality. Reality might not be pleasant, but at least that is your reality. When you pay attention to your, yourself, you might feel difficulties. Some people, they want to forget about themselves, become less aware about themselves. That's why they take alcohol and stuff. But if you just become aware about yourself, although the reality might not be pleasant, that is your reality. That is the present moment. And you can gradually work towards a betterment. So yes, mindfulness is a form of meditation and it is the best meditation that's out there. But we don't prefer using the word meditation because meditation has so many various meanings and it is a cursed word. So many people, they feel repellent by the word meditation. So what we suggest is that let's call it becoming aware about yourself call it mindfulness and when you use those words you can be mindful doing anything you can become aware that you're brushing you can become aware that you're having a meal you can become aware that you are running somewhere very fast for some task or a goal that awareness that we are talking about when you're angry you can become aware that i'm angry when you are thinking certain things, you can become aware, I am thinking these things. So it is more and more becoming a superpower to know what you are doing while doing it. So I hope the answer was related to the question. There are no other questions, Bhante. Thank you so much. Uh, Namanta, I'll hand over to you. I think uh, we are at the end of uh, verbal questions for today. 
uh, for today's session. Uh, so I would like to uh, thank uh, our venerable Bhante uh, for spending a uh, precious time advising us on the path to mindfulness, especially for beginners like us. And I would also like to uh, thank uh, the participants who allocated time from probably their busy schedules on a, on a Saturday uh, to join the program uh, to advance uh, uh, mindfulness practice during mindful walking, mindful sitting and uh, daily activities. So I would conclude uh, the end of session for mindfulness for today. Um, and uh, next, uh, uh, I would like to uh, make some announcements uh, uh, about uh, Nisarnavane activities. Some of you might be aware of the, the fact that uh, this master trainers program going on currently. And uh, uh, there are groups of uh, uh, or group leaders uh, training um, enthusiast uh, participants on uh, learning specialist uh, subjects, 21st century skills, uh, alongside with uh, mindfulness. And if you have any interest in uh, joining the programs, uh, you can send an email to our contact email address and we will reply to you. And I will uh, put some information on the Zoom chat uh, about the Satipasala Master Trainers program, uh, which you can refer to uh, for further information. Uh, I just uh, put in one um, video, which is the introduction uh, by Most Honorable Udayi Regama Dhammajeeva Mahathero and also Most Honorable Pandre Chandratan Thero. And then uh, there are some reading materials, which is available on the internet on the Master Trainers program. I will post that into the uh, chat section in Zoom. Uh, you can see that now. And then uh, there's a WhatsApp and Telegram uh, channel established uh, for anyone interested in contacting uh, the program leaders directly. I will put that details into the chat section. This is a unique uh, a trainer's program where the trainer is also being trained uh, to facilitate mindful uh, activities in, um, in all all. Uh, in people in all walks of life. And then I will move on to some other uh, programs that we are having. Uh, this one program on Sunday, that is a beginner's program. Uh, it is being conducted in, in Singhala. So any of you are, who are interested in joining this, you can join uh, this and I will uh, put in the session Zoom details and time details uh, into the uh, Zoom chat. Uh, this is uh, conducted on Sunday. Uh, for some you, some of since some of you are from the UK, you might not have the the right time for this session. But there are recordings available, and in the at the bottom of uh, that description, I posted in Zoom chat the recordings uh, link is uh, mentioned, and you can copy that. Uh, you can see the recordings there. We have more than oh, we have close to sixty sessions conducted, and all the recordings are available here it will be very useful for you as beginner. And then uh, every Sunday, uh, there is another uh, program being conducted uh, by Piramal Pandure Chandra Tanatero that is conducted in English. And uh, the session recordings are also available online. I will post that uh, uh, session details into the Zoom chat now. So you can uh, collect them from the Zoom chat. Alternatively, if you are interested, send us an email and we will uh, email the uh, full set of details to you. Uh, then every Tuesday, uh, there is a weekly uh, Dhamma talk conducted in uh, Singhala for the first hour. And then there's an English uh, Dhamma discussion happening uh, throughout the second hour. Uh, and it is uh, being headed by most venerable Uduire uh, Gumadamma uh, And I will uh, put the uh, details of that into the Zoom chat so you can copy it off from there. Uh, if you are not familiar with this, uh, uh, with this session, you can uh, copy these details. Uh, 
and the time is also mentioned there. I have put in Sri Lankan time, so you can calculate the UK time. Uh, then every Wednesday, there is another English Dhamma talk with Venerable Chandravatan Thero, and that starts at 7 a.m. Sri Lankan time. I will put in those details uh, to the Zoom chat. Uh, and yes, so these are some of the uh, session uh, details uh, I wanted to highlight that uh, have it, that will have interesting information for you uh, if you are able to attend. And uh, with that, uh, the announcements for today um, are over. Now I would like to uh, ask you if you have any questions on the uh, the program itself, uh, the uh, like uh, how uh, any feedback on how it how you would like it to be conducted, or any questions, any comments, any feedback will be valuable to us moving forward. You can raise the Zoom hand and uh, um, and unmute and uh, raise your uh, uh, raise your question or comments. Okay, I think uh, for today there are no questions. Uh, uh, with that, I would like to uh, end the session for today. I would like to also remind you that uh, uh, whatever practice you can do, you can write the reports or uh, keep keep it in your mind and uh, raise a question verbally uh, during session. Uh, that will encourage yourself and it will encourage others to keep on practicing. Uh, this program is uh, for beginners, but it's aimed at uh, encouraging you to practice, to write reports, Get it, gain feedback and go back to practice again. It's a continuous feedback loop. Uh, that is what we intend. I would like to thank you all for participating today and wish you ev everyone, wish every one of you a mindful week ahead. Thank you.